Welcome to the PTSD Bunker Gear for Your Brain podcast. Post-traumatic stress disorder is not a death sentence, yet a rite of passage to a higher level of tolerance. Stay with us and come out of the darkness as your host, Carl Waggett, shines a light on this very misunderstood disorder. Welcome to PTSD Bunker Gear for Your Brain. I'm your host, Carl Waggett. Today we're having a little short talk about warning signs. You know, you hear them everywhere. Well, you got you to gotta talk about warning signs, right? It's posted everywhere. There's all these different warning signs, but you know what? I, I must have missed all of them. Because the warning signs I had, I, don't, I didn't even know they were warning signs till I was in a doctor's office and the psychologist was telling me, yeah, that's a classic warning sign. So as always, with our little channel here, my stupidity is your advantage. I'm going to share three of my warning signs that I had absolutely no idea had any association whatsoever with PTSD. Now keep the giggling to a minimal because probably you knew all about this, but I certainly didn't. So you know what? Maybe there's a poor soul out there that might benefit something from this. I'll tell you where it all started as far as I'm concerned. Insomnia. That was it. And kind of strange sleeping patterns too. Just like, it's not that you can't fall asleep. You can't stay asleep. You know, you toss, you turn, you get up, you come downstairs, you watch TV, whatever. But it's just no bad dreams. Like, don't get me wrong, right? It's not like people are visiting you in the night. You just, you just can't stay asleep. That was, that was the very beginning stages for me. Next one that I found after that was this thing called hypersensitivity. Now, let me put it in a way that I understood it. Good old fashioned freaking out. That's it. I mean, losing it on stuff that you shouldn't lose it on, okay? Like your kid playing by the road is probably dangerous, but not to the fact that you go busting out the front door to pull him away from the, pull him away from the road. It's a bit over the top. You know, my kid goes near a pot of boiling water on the stove and I, oh, I, I freak. He's 12, right? Like just, just over the top behavior. The last and final, the nail in the coffin, it was the isolation. Now, now not the kind of isolation where I just, Okay, I just put myself in the house because I put myself in the house and that was it. No, I actually truly liked being alone. Now, here's the thing. That's a polar opposite to what I was a decade ago. I figured it was just the progress of getting old, but not in a decade. You, you, You don't lose that much in 10 years. So those three warning signs, if you were, I'm sorry, I I didn't see them anywhere. I, I missed the memo, as they say. So I want to take a few minutes and kind of point this out to you guys. Because you can research all the the warning signs all you want, right? And and you can either pay attention to them or you can you can do what I do and, and pay absolutely no attention to them and actually laugh at each and every one of them. But the thing is, those warning signs, they're not written in stone for everybody. See, that's that's the point I didn't get. I thought if I didn't have exactly what was on that, then that's not PTSD. And I'm fine. But what I find interesting was that I spent so much time dodging the diagnosis and, and completely neglecting the fact that my my life was slowly heading down the escalator. All, all in the fact of, of, of missing a diagnosis from PTSD. So, so you know, if I... If, if I can give any advice to anybody, whether it be PTSD or not, if you're starting to notice that you can't sleep at night, you need to get that checked. Because I, I, I can tell you, you know, you, you can you can keep up a smile for a while, but you run on a couple hours sleep for a month. And, and trust me, you, you lose that skip in your step. And life's too short for that. You know what? Not, not getting into all the doom and gloom. I'm not going there. Just... You know what, if you're starting to notice you're working in the emergency services, you don't sleep as good as you used to, you might want to look into this. Let's keep it simple. I think sometimes with this PTSD, it goes in the basement too much. I do. I think it, I think they take it to worst case scenario. You know, let's keep it light. Let's keep it friendly. Got problems sleeping? Talk to a doctor. You'll feel great. Seriously. Same with the hypersensitivity. I, it was the people around me that noticed that. So little heads up to the loved ones out there that, you know what, if you're noticing that your significant other, friend, whatever, starting to snap over little stuff, eh, you might want to get that checked, right? 
You see, I miss the whole meaning of warning signs. And I think it gets thrown around so much that they just go, okay, it's a warning sign. Okay, it's a warning sign, whatever. It's a warning sign of what it might actually turn into. And, and trust me, you don't want to go to the full blown thing. That's why, and I've said this before, it doesn't need to be pushed to the stage. I'll tell you what, take your time, go to PTSD, Bunker Gear for Your Brain. Check out the Facebook page, check out the Twitter. Have a look around at the warning signs, if you will, but, but really have a look at your life and see if any of them apply. And if they do, then you know what? There might be a little bit of help there. You know what? Make your life a little bit easier, if nothing else. Anyways, I won't take up too much of your time. Warning signs. Check them out. It's worth having a look at. You guys have a good day. Take care. Bye now. Thanks for listening to the PTSD Bunker Gear for Your Brain podcast. Gain more knowledge by going to PTSDBunkerGearForYourBrain.com. While you're there, subscribe and comment. Join us next time for the PTSD Bunker Gear for Your Brain podcast. <laughs>